Hi, welcome to the Bright Moment Show. Bright Moment takes you out of the shadows of your life and into the sunshine of your life. We bring techniques in from success, motivation, peak performance, and we take everything and put it in action-oriented tips you can use tonight to move your life ahead. Stay with us, you're gonna love it. Tonight I've got a great show for you. Tonight we're going to start off by doing a little book review. There's a great new book out there I want you to know about. It's called Talent is Overrated, What Really Separates World-Class world Performers from Everybody Else. What Really Separates World-Class Performers from Everybody Else. It's by Joff Colvin, and he's an editor at Fortune Magazine. Great book. Now, there's a lot of material in there, a lot of things about if you're into peak performance, success, motivation, all the stuff that we're into on this show, this is a book you're going to be very interested in. But I'm going to give you the part that I think you might want to know about the, that's going to be the most helpful to you. He spends a, line, a lot of time, he starts to talk about something called deliberate practice. Deliberate practice. He, he understands that if you're going to get better at something, you need to practice. If you have a speech you're going to make, you need to make the speech. If you're going to be a better baseball player, you need to practice pitching, throwing, or whatever it is. You need to practice. You don't just get better on your own for the most part. So you need to practice. But what uh, separates the superstars from uh, the also-rans is what he calls deliberate practice. Now, what does deliberate practice mean? It means that if you want to be a, a better baseball player or a better uh, football coach or whatever, you need to hone in on what it is that's crucial for success in your particular field or game. Now you can go out and you could spend all day and all night practicing all kinds of different stuff, but you're going to waste a lot of time on things that don't mean anything. So what you want to do is find out what are the key elements I have to be good at in order to succeed in this field. Uh, if you're a football player, maybe it's a passing game that, that all the other, the blocking and the tackling, whatever it is, uh, that's good and you have to have that down. But the real key to success for you in that particular field is being able to run a passing game or, or whatever it is. Uh, in, uh, if you're a speaker, maybe the key to success is not so much knowing the content about what it is that you're talking about, but being able to relate to the audience and make them laugh and lighten up and make learning fun. Uh, that might be more important than the actual content. So you practice getting laughs or lightening things up or that kind of stuff. So you get very, very focused on those very few things that set the winners apart from the also rants. And then you create deliberate practice. Now what's involved in deliberate practice? Well, the first thing is that you decide where you want to go. Uh, you want to be a better speaker. You want to be a, a better football team. Okay, right off the bat. So you're, you're beginning to, to hone in on what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Then you decide, well, what do I need to know and what do I uh, need to get over there. If I'm not uh, the best speaker in the world, I can't particularly make the audience laugh or I can't run a passing game in my football team, what is it that I need to teach or learn? So you begin to put together a plan. You say, okay, now I need uh, my players to be able to throw passes. I need my players to be able to catch passes. Uh, I need what da 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 and, and so you write out the, uh, those, those two or three points. If you, get, if you get 10, 20 items on that page, you're making a big mistake because there's only two or three things that you want to be deliberate uh, in your practice on and bang over and over and over and over until you hit. If you're an opera singer, you want to practice hitting the high notes because uh, that's what everybody's all, you know, with Pavarotti, the high C's and all that kind of stuff. Uh, whatever it is, hone in on just that part and get, keep the basics going, yes, but hone in and set your plan on just those two or three key items that's going to separate the also rans from the super guys, if you will. Great stuff. So you keep going. And so now what do you do? You've got your plan. You've got to do the work. 
Now, there's a lot of research coming in, uh, and I'm sure you've, uh, there's a, another book I'm going to be recommending in, in a later show called The Outliers. Uh, and that means somebody who, who's different from the pack. They, they, they lay outside the norm, if you will. And that's a great book, by the way, and I'm going to, t like I say, talk about it in a different show. But uh, the, the author of that particular book says that he's done a lot of studies about people who are at the peak of their field, and they have spent 10 thousand hours practicing whatever it is that's brought them to success. Can you imagine 10,000 hours? But in all the research, that's the number that keeps backing. So, you know, so yeah, you're going to have this great plan. You're going to know what you've got to do. But now you've got to go out there and put in those 10,000 hours. It's not going to happen. I mean, you know, we all hear these stories about the overnight successes and this kind of thing. That's a fluke. You know, you cannot count on that. You cannot take that to the bank. So you've got to have your plan, and now you've got to work your plan. You've got to go out there and put in that sweat, get the bruises, whatever it takes, and that way you'll be working the plan. But it's got to be deliberate because you've got to be focused on what it is, those, 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 those few two or three items that you're concentrating on. Don't go off of those, as tempting as it is and as boring as it is. Can you imagine practicing the same thing 10,000 hours? I mean, that is boredom. That's perseverance. There's no glory uh, when you're alone in that room or alone on that field day after day, night after night. But that's it. If you want to see the heroes, everybody, after everybody else has gone home, they're still in there slogging it out. Tiger Woods, right? I mean, you know, you know, all know uh, how, how famous Tiger Woods is for day after day, night after night. He's the first one on the course. He's the last one to leave. Rain, snow, he's out, boom, bang, hitting the ball. He just never gets up. And there's an example of deliberate practice. He knows that in order to win the game, it comes down to a putt or, or whatever. He, he knows that there's two or three particular strokes that genuinely win the game over time. It's a good drive off the tee, or, or it's a, a good putt, or whatever it is. Uh, he's got those two or three plays down, and he practices them over and over and over again. There's no glory. It's a very lonely business. You know they, the old expression, it's lonely at the top? Well, it's lonely before you get at the top. That's when it's really lonely. At the top, it's not so bad. <laughs> but on the way up there, it can get pretty lonely.